Get all the news you need. 104.7 Triple M. Hello, Adelaide. No one knows Adelaide like these guys. Triple M Breakfast with Rude Dits and Laws. Overnight news. Well, Anthony Albanese is in uh, trouble. He's losing uh, his popularity. So what does he do? He goes and drops the hex debt to try and get all the youngies back on side. Three billion dollars worth of hex debt's going to be wiped off. So about a thousand bucks each for about three million loans out there. Um, so I don't know a if thousand it's gonna... bucks. <laughs> okay. For three million people, <laughs> yeah, I know, but it's not like you get a thousand bucks in your pocket. It comes off the thing, and it's the, it, you, you don't pay. Straight. Do you want me to ring him up to not worry about it, or <sighs> I tell him not to worry Bro, about it, a bunch of things. Three billion sounds like a lot of money, well, but it is, it is a lot of an money. absolute drop in the ocean to each individual kid. It's not going to make any difference to their life whatsoever. No, it probably won't. Don't do it then. What they need? Well, is I'd argue three it. billion dollars. I know it's a lot of money, but. To all of these kids out there, it's not helping them. It's not changing. Well, well Loz, you've been through this. Oh, what they need to start equipped. doing instead of worrying about all this shite is actually paying the hex off incrementally throughout the year so you get a reduction in interest as you pay as opposed to just doing one lump sum of hex out of your tax at the end of the financial year because it's not, it's not graded then. You don't lose interest with every payment. Mm. When, you, you pay, when do you pay? How does it work? So it, when I pay my hex, it comes out of my tax return. So I file my tax return and until that's filed and they know your annual income and all that stuff, yep. then they can but put... But isn't that when they sorry, pay I off thought, your debt? I thought everyone got it weekly out of their pay pack. It does come off weekly, but that goes into a different account and it sits there you all year. You get interest on that? Uh, you pay the interest that it was at opening balance, you pay that for ev- for the entire thing. So... So no, in the money that you put into an account, yeah, it's not reducing each week. It. Does that get interest on that money? What get what does what get interest? Well, you've paid if you're t- if they're taking money off you and it goes into an account, are you getting interest nah. on that? So that money sits there, and then opening balance of the new fin year after you've done your tax, whatever whatever the interest rate is um, on that, mm. that's what gets paid off. So when I was paying off my tax, uh, paying off my hex incrementally through my paycheck, it was going, I didn't realize this because I was an idiot, went into another account. Mm. I thought that it was coming off my hex. I yeah. thought that that was reducing yeah. it all year, but no, it comes off in a lump sum. And because it came off after financial year had started, the new one, and that was when the big interest rate, so 7.1%, mm. that's what was applied as opposed to what I'd been incrementally paying off. Mm. So it ended up costing me thousands and thousands well, of dollars. that's unfair. Yeah. It, that's what's annoying people, I think, is just how unfair the whole thing is. Mm. Not this one thousand dollars savings. That's great, whatever. But yeah. well, he's All right. trying to win some votes anyway. Yeah, well, um, panic room. Panic rooms are starting to be a thing that are, is getting built into homes in Australia and around the world with a lot of the home invasions that are happening. We've heard so much about people crashing. Uh, you know, getting into homes. It's becoming more of a thing. People who can afford to are building panic rooms. It's a new... So what does that mean? Explain that. Well, you basically have got a room where you can go when you know you're getting burgled. So like a bunker? Yeah. Well, yeah, but it's just a room. It's probably got you know locks. extra strong locks on it and you can probably, you know... Reinforce. Re- ring God, is that what we've come to? Well, it does. It is happening, yeah. People in the US have been using them for a while, but it's, it's rich people stuff. Right. It's not yeah. like... You wouldn't be getting a panic room unless you could really afford it. Have you seen this? They're thinking about getting rid of reclining seats on economy air. Good. No. About time. I'm fuming. I don't see the problem in reclining. There's I, not enough room. You just, if someone There's in front no of you room. reclines, you just recline and then that's fine. And well, then I both of to. you get to sit back and it's great. Hang on. So because you want to recline and you think it's great, everyone... <laughs> Everyone else should as well. Well, I'm just saying, why do they give you the option if it's so evil? That's a good question. But I just, there's I, just no room. Well, they're getting rid of it now, so you don't have to worry about it. No, nah, I'm fuming. All the problems. My back hurts. I need to sit back a little bit. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And if someone well, in front of me reclines, I just recline. I go, okay, well, then if I recline, then that's fine. And then we all recline, and then everyone on the plane oh, no, everyone gets to lay oh, back, and it's yeah. beautiful. Everyone recline. <laughs> everyone recline. It's lovely. All right. Now, just finally, just finally, if you're, in the, if you're in the market for a jaffle maker or if you want a photo of Lionel Messi, famous soccer player, or if you want a leaf blower, uh, all of these items, Sydney Airport have got 2,500 items in their lost property. 
and they're auctioning all of it off. And there's some of the items you can get. Of course, in there, Jaffel uh, maker. A Jaffel maker, a leaf blower. By duty free, they got it. I don't know. But hey, some, a, people have a left leaf these things. At the airport. Yeah, and they're auctioning all of it off for charity. So if you. Oh, for charity. Yeah. I was going to say, they're not making money off people. No, they're stuff, giving the money away. God, lost right. property boxes. Thousands of lost property, lost property yeah. boxes. How do these things get left at the airport? We used to, at the Christmas party at work, we would do a like a um, Chris Kringle for all the lost yeah. property oh, yeah. at the pub. And some of the stuff was. Mm. Unbelievable. At that a pe- pub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Over the year, just all the crap that people left behind. Mm. Hilarious. Over the weekend, Loz went to the medieval fair in Paracombe. I was Cue down. the medieval fair music. Have we got any? Oh. Yeah. Does that, that do the job? It's That'll taking me back. It's taking me back to Saturday so morning. How many freaks were there on oh, the weekend? Do you want to know? 12,000 people came to <laughs> What? 12,000 12, people. 000. They have doc- tents for, with. Doctors and psychiatrists and stuff. No, like that. no. 12, Do you know what? It was a very people. wholesome affair. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to pay to get in. Yep. Twenty five bucks to get in. That all go to. Yeah. So the people who run it. I don't medieval know. Medieval society or something. Yeah. What happens it's to actually, this joint? It, well, it's actually a lot of fun. You just go in. There's people hanging around. There's uh, the white. Raven, the Pale Raven, sorry, is the name of the pub. The Pale Raven. Yeah, they put a tent on the tennis courts, and uh, it's, that's the pub. That's the pub, the Pale Raven, and there I was like people playing music in there and now, diddly diddly um, diddly. Well, I was just trying to think what uh, people paying to get in. What they use in the day, drachmas or something. Yeah, what yeah. Was, what was the currency? Shekel. Shekels. Shekels. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. Doubloons. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the 25 bucks a head, they would have made an absolute $25 a head to get in. Yeah, for You've an adult. You've got to be yeah. joking. No, what do you get for that? Uh, the experience. The experience. Look, it was great. There was there was jousting. Yeah. Um, there was sword fighting. There was punch and duty. Uh, Who are these food. people doing jousting? And I don't like, know. They, had, they literally stuff. had metal helmets on. I couldn't see. Okay. Yeah, they had the full armor. No, but like who... In I everyday don't know. life, joust. Not sure. Whatever you call it. I couldn't tell you, Ruth. So Sir Lancelot took on <laughs> King Arthur the, or... Jousting other, sticks. Other you than know? the people on the castle that yeah. sold the jousting sticks. Oh, I couldn't tell you a thing about the people who were jousting, but they knew what they were doing. I mean, there was they were jousting, so they've obviously mm. got some sort of jousting I, I read society. about the sword stuff. Yeah. You have to have... Exp- uh, you know, a lot of trust in the yeah. other people because you could mm. die. You could actually die. Well, the thing that I really enjoyed about arts it people. was the... Um, the silversmithing and the people who were like blacksmiths making metal, making swords and things like that, they've preserved the art of doing it mm. over years and years and years. And they had like people banging and making old jewellery and old right. sort of yeah, chain mail. That's pretty cool. They've got it? the chain mail, the big, um, the suit of arm things, and yeah. they, can, they put it on you and you can feel how heavy right. it was. Like, how heavy was it? So the fact that people were able to fight battles mm. in this stuff <laughs> is Actually, unbelievable route, like a hundred oh, kilos. Protected their life. Yeah, protect their life. But I, I wonder if in the movies we've recreated it a bit too quick <laughs> because the way they would have been, uh, like really slowly <laughs> fighting to death, you'd have to be so strong. But it was great. Paracone Wines had a, they were doing some wine up there. So we had, we had some wines. And That's just all about drinking, is it? Well, I drove, so I had to watch my friends get tiddled and, mm. you know. Did you run out of juice on the way there? No, I didn't. What Good did girl. they serve in the Pale Raven? So Paracom Wines had their thing, but they served mead, sparkling mead. They had yeah. mulled wine. Right. Um, they had a bunch of stuff. But the the can I just say sparkling mead? Bloody mm. hell, it's good. Is it's it? It's very nice. Yeah, right. It's a honey-based sort of, it's sort of like honey cider. Okay. But without, because cider gives me a bit so of a So is it ever. compulsory to dress up when you go there? No, not at all. Plenty of people weren't dressed up. I think people just, you know. Do, feel, do you fun. feel a, bit, a little bit left if you don't dress up? Uh, I think I think I was a bit because we were, I wore a very mild costume and I was slightly nervous about it and then when I got there I just felt underdressed. I think <laughs> if you're out of costume, you almost feel like out of place. Whereas the costumed, I thought I'd be like embarrassed to wear a costume, but people were got. My friend had like a full gown on. It was crazy. Lots Is of this fun. a thing that just the local support or the people come from everywhere? That people just, come from everywhere. And, and they've they're, got they're, one they're in They're all diehard, well. though, they? Yeah, they've got one in Gamaraka as well and they've got... look. How uh, often does this happen? Once a year. Okay. But 12,000 people, I think, is a record. That's huge. Yeah. There, but there were plenty of people there. I saw there was a woman from Burnside who listens to our show. She was there with her daughter, Lillian. <laughs> yes. If we got a listener in Burnside. We do. We have a listener as well in Burnside. As Sandra. And she went to the medieval fair and she had a great time, so... Mm. Yeah, right. I, well, I, I need I had a more. Great time. Come on, what was that? What else happens there? What you, you walk around in gear and? Uh, well, obviously you've got the people dying of dysentery and you know stuff in the corner and <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> all that Bring classic out your dead. medieval stuff. Bring out your dead. <laughs> Bring out, yeah, the what life food of do they have there? 
Um, I had a hot dog. I don't know where that <laughs> The knights of the round table didn't have, no, they didn't have hot, yeah. hot dogs. dogs. Can I get onion on mine, please? <laughs> and mustard. <laughs> Oh, the phone's ringing, dude. Come on, the footy was last Thursday. Yeah, Come she on. has a dip, Mark, from Albert. Uh, on the phone. It's your second cousin. She's the biggest fan of Port Adelaide. Yeah. She might not be anymore, though. Uh, hey, Shaz, you still in shock from the showdown loss? You got me? You yeah. Got me? yeah. Oh, yeah. sorry. Sorry, guys. I was just ironing my Sack Hinkley sign. Um, oh, oh, no. Oh, I didn't that. want to get it out. I didn't want to, but I had to. That was our worst performance in a showdown since... Well, since the last one did, so <laughs> Wouldn't have been Black much Thursday, du- I'm calling it. No, Wouldn't have been no. much dust on the uh, sign, uh, Loz, would they? No, I won't even need to wash it, actually, Rue. It's ready to go. But the Crows were a little bit better on the night. I thought they played reasonably well, Shaz. What, you think it was a fair and square win, did you? Oh, well, yeah, you know, you missed a few goals, but I just, I just want to know how much money you actually gave to the umpires oh, because oh, no. every free kick was for the crows. I swear, I reckon I saw a hint of a crows jumper poking out from the fluoros on one of them. Oh, oh, one of them was kidding. blowing kisses to Rory Sloan in the stand. It was a disgrace. Yes, that's yeah, right. Blame the umpires. Hey, what um, what happened with Rosie playing, getting injured? Uh, Kennington's admitted he made a mistake. Yeah, look, I mean, I guess we all make mistakes, did you? Well, I just dropped five of mine off at school, but um, <laughs> oh, I'm only kidding. They walked. Um, but where do these, seriously, where do these port doctors get their credentials? Back of a wheat bix packet? I mean, everyone knows that you never play an injured player in a showdown, obviously, unless they have a severe concussion, yeah. in which case play on. <laughs> what about, how bad was the goal kicking, Shaz? Oh. Five goals, 18. Could you believe it? Well, look, they hired a goal-kicking coach from the UK, didn't they? Maybe they should, you know, replace him with a goal-kicking coach from Uzbekistan or something. I mean, it can't get worse, and it might be cheaper. Look, it's not good, boys. I mean, it's just not good. Uh, Port have kicked 113 behinds this year already yeah. in eight rounds of footy. I haven't seen this many behinds since I did a stint cleaning the toilets at Madame Josephine. <laughs> the cracks right. are showing. Yeah. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Always nice You'll when you're You'll be right, Dennis. Ah, count the pearl. Interesting, you, interesting. Day this week for Shaz Mother's Day. Yeah, she'll be confused. <laughs> <laughs> it's rude, it's a loss. Triple M. I wish my wife only went to the medieval fair. How's her form asking me last Wednesday if mm. it's okay for her to go to Bali on Sunday? <laughs> so, how many days' Whoa, notice? That about, is what, last about Thursday, year. Friday, Saturday, four days' notice. I'm preparing <laughs> for a showdown. I'm under pressure. The Crows are two and five. It's mayhem here, obviously. Mm. It's mayhem here. <laughs> um, and anyway, I say yes. If you can get things organised, you might as well go. And this is not a regular event, people mm. out there listening. She doesn't fly here, there and everywhere. She's yeah. a worker. Remember that time? What did Joe say when she wanted to go out one time? She was going out for tea one night last year. Uh, just for, with her girlfriends, and Joe said, you're not going, you went out last year. <laughs> so she doesn't go out a lot. Um, but I just want to apologise for the... You went out last year. Exactly. <laughs> I want to apologise to the three schools that our kids go to at the moment. If they look like they're underprepared, they they haven't got the right clothes on, um, hmm. socks Messy are not hair. matching, yeah, hair's all over the shop, teeth aren't brushed. Um, you know, the wrong clothes, well, it's because they haven't got their mum there doing it. But I have got great in-laws helping out this week, so thanks, Mick and Irene. But um, getting stuff, I actually went to Woolworths yesterday for the first time with my daughter, eldest daughter, because I usually just shop during the week when we yeah. need food. But we had to actually go and stack the fridge to make sure there's stuff for <laughs> lunch boxes. So you and Soph went and Me did and the Soph went and did that, up. so we've stocked up. Um <laughs> And uh, we've got a program written down for every day because there's a lot of things, Dits, with school sport before school. And that means you have to have clothes ready for that. And then you've got to have your clothes packed for after school sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, if they get extra help, like one of our kids does uh, during the day, you have to have that. Lunch boxes have to be sorted. You have to have your school uniform clothes all sorted mm-hmm. because usually that's, they're all over the shop because mm-hmm. they don't chuck them in the, in the, in the laundry or whatever. Homework needs to be done. Forms, you know, that, you know, oh, that need God. to be filled in. So it's going to be a busy few days. So you might have to support me a little bit. You two. Okay. So when's she back? For Mother's Day. <laughs> oh, feed up. <laughs> She's going away. Off and the she plane and get back. pampered. What's yeah, she exactly. coming home to, though? Is it going to be... A bomb site. Yeah. Um, I think it'll be all right. Okay. My in-laws will be helping out a little bit. But, <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, What's on the menu bit... tonight? What are you cooking for dinner we tonight? Had a, I cooked a roast yesterday afternoon. Oh, so that's good. Right. 
Um, tonight we, uh, I think we are either having chops or meatballs. I've got a few meals planned out. Look at you, dad of the century. No, uh, oh. don't go that far. No, no, no well. Because I, I as was you joking, know, I but... can't use a washing machine. <laughs> yeah. So I've got soap on that. <laughs> and I cut my finger and doing the dishes last night. I oh can't use God. the dishwasher. <laughs> but anyway, we'll get through, but it's a... I feel for the single parents yeah, out there lot. after I've had to do it for five days. It's a lot. Anyway, support me anyway. You well done, Roo. Thank you. You got it. On Triple M Breakfast with Roo, Dits and Loz. Did you learn something? What did we learn? learn, learn. What did we learn? Mother's Day this Sunday, yep. uh, which is a great day on the calendar. It's the busiest day of the year for restaurants um, and flowers. It's one of the highest selling days as well. Not surprising. But this year, it's 100 years old, Mother's Day. It happened in uh, 1924. When the first mother was born. (laughs) (laughs) After World War... Well, World War One, yeah, they wanted to start looking after the mums. So, yeah, that I was, didn't know that. Yeah, nineteen twenty-four. It's also seventy years of Meals on Wheels this year as well. Did you say your mum was tired? Yeah, up my mum worked for them. Yeah, yeah for a long time. Really? Volunteered. Yeah. Have a guess how many kitchen. meals they've pumped out in seventy years? Over God. fifty-six million meals. Yeah. What? And mainly volunteers. Mm. And Great. And then the volunteers end up getting supported by Meals on Wheels because a lot of them are older people yeah. too. Yeah. 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 I wonder if that'll be able to keep on keeping on with people having less time to help in the future. Oh, no, well, I hope they can because it is very important. Yeah, a couple of big milestones. There you go. Um, I learned that the fact that we have solar eclipses and lunar eclipses is just a total coincidence because the sun is 400 times larger than the moon mm. and the earth is 400 times further from the earth than the sun. Gosh. My brain's Hang on a sec, yeah. my brain's... Okay, so basically, the fact that it all lines up when they cross over so that they're yeah. perfectly lined up and they yeah. cover each other up yeah. is a total freak coincidence mm. because they're bigger and... But how can it happen <clears throat> all the time then if it's a coincidence? It, it, I mean, we're in orbit. It's just a coincidence that the moon and the sun and the earth are perfectly spaced <clears throat> apart from each other so that... Because one of them is so much bigger than the other, the fact that they're all lined up perfectly so that the size compensates so that when they overlap each other, mm. they all cross each other out. Because, you know... It happens like on a constant yeah. time frame, doesn't it? Yeah, we've, we have two this year. We have two solar and two lunar eclipses this year. So, but the Every fa- year? Uh, every year. There's a, there's, they happen every year. But it's like that phenomenon. I've just done it now. I'm just thinking. So I can hold my finger yeah. up in my eye and block out that building across there that I'm exactly. looking at. Exactly. But you have to have it in the exact so, spot and to yet do my it. My finger's nowhere near as big as that building, is exactly. it? Exactly. So that's the phenomenon you're talking about. But if you move about. it an inch forward or an inch yeah. back, it completely Changes doesn't work. That's so right. your finger is essentially, we're all lined up exactly in the right way, yeah. Yeah. naturally, so yeah. that it happens. Mm. It won't be like that forever because the yeah. earth will move and stuff like that. So right. in about yeah. a billion years, if anyone's right. still around. <laughs> but the fact that people just think, you'll be known in a Billion years because you said that. Yeah, because they'll have a plaque of me <laughs> and it'll last. Yeah. That's right. Very smart girl. Uh, now, radio. what I learned <laughs> is the world is obsessed. You probably know this, Loz. Mm-hmm. The world is obsessed with the number seven. Do you know about this? Lucky sevens. Wow. Seven days in a week. Yeah. Seven wonders of the world. Mm-hmm. Seven deadly sins. Mm-hmm. There are seven seas. Mm-hmm. There are seven continents. Seventh day you rested. There are seven colours in the rainbow. Yeah. And on it goes. It's, it's a very it's a magical thing you can number. read about this. Yeah, it's true. There yep. are, and there are many, many more I could reel off. Mm-hmm. Isn't that incredible? Yep. Lots why, of people with seven, seven is seven? their favourite. I don't know. I don't know. Lucky and it's not number? an even number either. It's no. odd. and It's a prime number. Yep. So there you go. And you can, as I say, you can read about that. There are, there's like a hundred things that have to do with the, to the number seven in the really? world. Really? Yep. Yeah. So there you go. That's what I learnt this week. Sports Card World, the specialists in sports cards and trading card games. Sports Card World, Region Arcade, Rundle Mall. Triple M Breakfast with Blue Dits and Lies. What's a goal? Overnight sports. A lot of people still talking about the Port Adelaide situation, Rue, where Connor Rosie supposedly played injured in the showdown the other night. We know that Ken Hinkley had to put his hand up and say, I accept responsibility. Well, former Hawthorne and Geelong star Isaac Smith, who now appears on Triple M, has given it a different perspective. Yeah, see, I have a bit of a different point of view and thought. There were so many times, I know personally through my career, you had nicks in your calves and your hemis and you played with them. Connor's obviously young in his career, and if he has an issue like this again, I'm sure he'll miss the week. But it's just finding that line where it works. And we look at it now and it's happened and we say it's a mistake. But if he got through the game unscathed and he added to the team, you'd say, oh, well, we got that right, move on. 
Yeah, so he's played a huge amount of games, won plenty of premierships and just letting you people out there know that it does happen Can quite it. a bit. Hmm. But he did say uh, next time he wouldn't play. All right, yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Now, uh, with Port Adelaide still, Mitch George Yard is to be assessed this week. Uh, there's a problem with his knee. Todd Marshall rolled an ankle, but should be I'm okay. It's not too good, Mitch George Yard. So well, I hope that, that, that rumour is wrong. Mm. All right, meantime, uh, Adelaide captain Jordan no, Dawson. I'm hearing that it's bad. It's okay. I'm hoping that's wrong. Yeah, yeah all right. Yeah. Uh, Adelaide skipper Jordan Dawson is keen to see the showdown be given a permanent standalone on a Thursday or Friday night. It's probably the biggest crowd I've played in at Adelaide Oval and, and the buzz from our fans was unbelievable. So i will be more than happy for it to be a standalone game on a Thursday or Friday night going forward. I think it's definitely the best um, rivalry in footy. And- I think it deserves it. It'll be good. So with our sides, Port Adelaide take on Geelong Friday night away. That'll be hard. And then the Crows take on Brisbane. Uh, when do you play Sunday? Sunday, Sunday Adelaide Oval. Adelaide right. Oval. Now, speaking of Brisbane, gee, they had a big, big win, according to their coach, Chris Fagan. I think it's the most amazing and courageous win I've ever seen, to be honest, um, by any group of players that I've had anything to do with. And uh, I'm just so proud of them. You know, they're out on their feet. They got four injuries, big injuries. Um, Stasevich got injured in the warm up, so they had to pull out a, a lad out of the off the emergencies that already played a game that uh, that day. Oh, in, really? In the VFL, yeah. And then Darcy Gardner did his knee. Lincoln McCarthy did his knee, and also Noah Ainsworth got a concussion. So they've got four injuries out of that game. They won't be fronting up this week. All right, let's look at the ladder. It's a couple of surprises. Sydney top of the ladder after round eight. Yeah, well, that's a good win. GWS, GWS and Melbourne round out the top four. Port Adelaide slipped to seventh. Adelaide improved to twelfth. Now I went down to Morphville on Saturday. Rue had a magnificent day thanks to the SAJC. Did they do a good job. Very good day down there. Good crowd. Jamie Carr. Combined with Tony McAvoy to win the million-dollar South Australian derby on Coco Sun. Uh, and the action continues this weekend. Group 1 race again, the Goodwood. Jamie uh, Cowan, both big races, yes, didn't she? Yeah. On the map as well. Yep, yep. so... Uh, My tip comes second again. Yeah. I'm sorry about that, everyone. So great to see Jamie Carr back in Adelaide. That's our look at sport. Yep, all thanks to Sports Card World and Region Arcade Rundle Mall. Uh, speaking of sport, now you can listen to the footy anywhere you go. Just download the listener app and listen in live. It's Rude, it's and Loz. Talking about pearls of wisdom, uh, one of our friends is organising a wedding. Uh, he's got a wedding and he's a bit worried about the weather. Um, and he's uh, yeah panicking about uh, an outdoor wedding. Mm. And we just said, you can't worry about the weather because you can't control it. Can't control it. There's that old, um, It's if you go to Alcoholics Anonymous, they, they all say a prayer at the beginning of the meeting. Do they? I, and you know this because... I've watched a lot of movies <laughs> oh, about right. it. Oh, it's yeah. anonymous, it's, even if I went, I wouldn't be able to say. Hi, my name's Laura. Yeah. It's, it's for a group where you're all anonymous, it's weird that they make you say your name at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wow. But they say the serenity Circle prayer, trust. which is actually... The serenity ev- prayer. Everyone should say it because it's not mm. just for addicts. It's, it's, it's a very important sort of philosophy, in my opinion. It's God or whoever, universe, or if you're talking to yourself, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, <clears throat> the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So I think... Jesus, that's a bit hard on a Monday morning. Isn't that, but isn't that amazing? You know, like, accept the things you can't change because worrying about them is there's nothing you can do. Like, is it going to rain on my wedding mm. day? The courage to change the things I can, because a lot of people know that they need to fix something, but they don't have the courage. And then the wisdom to know the difference between the two things, because Mm. sometimes you don't know that you can't change it or it's not about you and you waste a lot of time. So I love that one. A mate of mine, Wayne Carey, has been in more than his fair share of trouble. He said, Mm -hmm. don't worry about worrying. Worrying is like riding a rocking horse. It gives you something to do, but it gets you nowhere. Oh. Good one. My man always said, always said, said, money isn't everything. But it runs a bloody close second. <laughs> <laughs> I used to say that all the time. <laughs> I think money isn't everything till you haven't got it. That's it. I love a I love a good quote. Um, in, in the money vein, money talks, wealth whispers. Oh, I like that. Deep. Um, deep. Money <laughs> talks, wealth whispers. Hungry dogs in the cellar, they'll always find a way to get out. That's about keeping secrets. Oh. Keeping secrets is like having hungry dogs in the cellar. They mm-hmm. always find a way to get really? out. Mm. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. Um, the best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best <laughs> time is now. So even if you didn't get around to it and you feel like it's too Better late, late never. do it now.
I love the fact that you then explain the pearls of wisdom. Well, because usually they're said in a conversation. That's women explaining, is it? Yeah, women explaining. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. you can't blame no, me because you kind of looked at me us. confused after yeah, everything. Fair enough, Loz. Right, we're talking pearls, pearls of, of wisdom. wisdom. And yeah. the phones have lit up. I love these because I, I go in one ear out the other in yeah. my head. I always say, I'm going to remember that, and then <laughs> I don't. But I write them down now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go to Golden Grove. Greg, you got a good one for us? Yeah, mate. Um, my old man always used to say that love's like a fart. If you force it, you're going to end up with a turd. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> Very Come profound. On, yeah. I like he was it. A, he was a poet. Yeah, he uh, was. Yeah. Uh, Melody, <laughs> oh, Melody yeah. at Victor Harbour. What's yours, Melanie? <laughs> oh, I don't think I can beat that one. Yeah. But no, um, no, yeah. so this go. one's from a beautiful old Western movie called Lonesome Duff. Mm-hmm. And it's um, in regards to a young fella going on his first big drive up north, um, driving a heap of cattle up north, and his old man says to him, um, keeps tries to hand him over a gun, and the young kid goes, oh, no, no, no. But the dad says, better to have it and not need it than it is to need it and, and not, not have, have it. it. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, I, I like that. that. Good on you, Melanie. Always be prepared. Yeah. I guess that's what they're saying. Better to be looking at it than looking for it. Yeah, that's, that's you're, it. Whenever yeah. you're packing the uh, esky for a function. That's exactly right. Uh, let's go to Parallel. G'day, Shane. How are you, team? What's your pearl of wisdom? Uh, opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one, Everyone's. but nobody wants to hear it. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> It's very good. <laughs> yeah. I don't know the Funny last show. part of it. No one wants to hear yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Tracy at Seton, what's your pearl of wisdom? Hi, guys. How are you going? Good, good. Great, Trace. Um, mine's, um, you've got to train your mind to be stronger than your emotions or you'll lose yourself every time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah Stay in control. Yeah. Well done. Yep. Good, yep. good. Let's go to Mazza Bizza. G'day, Tristan. Hey, how are we going, guys? Good. What's your pearl of wisdom? Uh, money's not everything, but if you've got money, you've got everything. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah, close okay. to it. All right, Darren, at Tanunda, what's yours? Good morning, how are we going? Good, Darren. Right. There's uh, been some good ones this morning, but mine is uh, if you buy cheap, you buy twice. Hey. That's right. Yeah. That's so true. Quality's remembered Very good. long after yep. the price is forgotten. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good one, Darren. All right, uh, who did you like? Measure twice and cut once. Measure That's a good twice, one. Cut oh, once. I like that. The last fella, Darren. Yeah, from yeah. Tanunda. Had that up his sleeve, he didn't give him a chance. <laughs> oh. Okay. Look we didn't him. measure twice. Mm. Oh, we just talked about pearls of wisdoms and the text line's uh, going off on 04885-1047. Money can't buy you happiness, uh, but it can me- make being miserable a whole lot more comfortable and relaxed. Mm. Uh, don't bet on odds on horses. Don't run upstairs and don't eat pies on Mondays. Is that because ba- they don't... Bake, bake on, them on Sundays, Sundays, I suppose. Is oh, that right? They go back. Yeah, they're not fresh. You lay down with dogs and you catch fleas. Yeah. yeah that one. Um, what else? Hard work beats talent when talent fails to work hard. Yes, very, All very right. true. Uh, you're not the dumbest bloke in the world, but you better hope he doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you will be. Uh, uh, some people talk a lot and say very little, while others talk very little. And but say, say a lot. lot. That's me. Yeah. A I'm smart that man person. learns from his mistakes, but a wise man learns from everyone else's. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what about, uh, it's not the arse end of the earth, but you can see it from him. Mm. <laughs> oh, I didn't get to do my favourite one. What was it? Um, women are like sausages. If you ever want to enjoy either of the two, don't watch how they're prepared. <laughs> so that watch your woman getting Get ready. ready. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it'll show all the secrets of how the sauce is made. <laughs> I have a mate who's the the situation in their house has changed a bit. So she started work. She, her work starts a bit earlier in the day, and her husband has to get the kids ready for school now. Mm-hmm. And they got two little girls. And she said that she was so impressed because the girls, when she picked them up from school, they had braids in their hair. Wow! And she went, "Oh my god! Like, what's he? How does he learn that? Like, mm. he doesn't know how to do that." And apparently, what he'd done was he'd watched a YouTube tutorial. Oh. On course. how to braid hair yeah. and he wow. learned how to do it and been practicing on the dolls, yeah. apparently. Father of the dolls. year. I know, but he nailed it. And she yeah. said it was so impressive. And he said, well, I learned that on YouTube. Yeah. And it made me think, I have learned some amazing things from YouTube. Like? Like tutorials on how to do things. Well, first of all, most of the songs I learn on piano are from YouTube tutorials now. Really? Yeah, because sheet music's really Is that expensive. quite common, people learning music. how to do music on there? Very common, because a lot of people like me, like, Listening and watching, and that's how we learn, as opposed to reading music. I reckon my nephew learned how to play the guitar. Ruben, yeah, I yeah. think he learned how to do it on online. You can learn some, and you can learn really good 
not just sort of crappy skills, like really good skills. If you get the right person, it's amazing how many people are putting free stuff up on there that is genuinely good lessons. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to do it now. But I once changed an alternator in a car. An using, alternator? Using oh, a YouTube yeah. tutorial. Oh, I'm not yeah, kidding. Wow. stretch. Yeah, it was. It was you I'm you getting the tools just to pay for it. Yeah. I had to borrow a toolkit, but yeah. you got Swear to, on your life no, you changed No, 100%. An I swear on my life. It was a, a Toyota Corolla. It needed a new alternator. And um, actually, it ended up just being the brass brush wires that needed to be changed, but I changed yeah. the whole thing. Oh, well done. Um, but it wasn't that Jeez. tricky, but you wouldn't have been... You're I a was, grease monkey. <laughs> it was, <laughs> I forgot it immediately how to do it, but step by step, if you follow it, yeah. something about removing, disconnecting it, then Putting there was a together. belt that you had to hmm. pulley, a belt pulley. Yeah. Uh, but I That's did impressive. It. I Very stuffed it up impressive. the first time, and I remember turning the car on, and I knew hmm. immediately something wasn't quite right, hmm. but I got it the second time. Good effort. I've YouTube nothing on YouTube. YouTube. I need to get. I've done a couple of things, um, and I'm not brilliant with social media, but YouTube to me is quite easy. Oh, that's different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I've this. I'm look. I'm a hacker at golf, but I have picked up some golf tips this year. Yeah, really good things that have helped me. And it's just amazing instructions. You you just sit on there and watch YouTube. Yeah, they're videos, and they go for two minutes, three minutes. Oh, what on chipping or yeah, putting, putting, chipping, just little tips like that. How to kick the ball out of the bushes? Yeah, stuff with your foot. (laughs) That's right. Yeah, (laughs) how to count. Yeah, and the other one I've learned is tying knots on my. Boat, because yeah, I was, I didn't okay. know how to do yeah like mooring your boat or yeah, something like that. You yeah. can watch a video. Well, you definitely need good knots on yeah boats, otherwise yeah. your boat might float away. Yeah. So what you've learnt slip knots and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and okay. it's really easy to follow. And then when you're on the like on the boat, I then have the hold the phone the and I watch it again, again. Yeah. while I'm doing it. Well, yeah, if you haven't got someone on your boat teaching you, you probably do yeah. need YouTube. So there's a lot of lot of handy things. You Did can they teach you how to not reverse into a pylon and stuff? Uh, I haven't done that one yet. Yeah, that video. That one yet. You just no. either have that so or I'm still you hitting things. Yeah. <laughs> how to catch a fish? What about I've learnt um, cooking things? Yep. Yep. I want to go cooking, home well, it is the cooking show model, isn't it? Yeah. It's, but they've just they've made it really step by step basic sort of instructions, <laughs> and some people have had great success being becoming teachers online with yep. YouTube. Right. Yep. What have you learned online? Uh, give us a buzz one triple three five three. We got a great voucher just in time for Mother's Day. Is this yeah. called uh, Devar? Devar. Yeah. Devar and House. We got a hundred dollar voucher. There. This is a wellness place where you can get massages, massages facials, uh, lymphatic draining, uh, lymphatic oh, draining. Yep, they've got all high tech stuff there. Yep. Red light therapy. Red light therapy is great for your skin. I, know, I thought it was something else for a minute. <laughs> no, uh, hundred dollar no. voucher oh. to the bar house. One triple three five three. What have you learned online? It's right. It's a loss. Six fifty one on Triple M. What have you learned on YouTube? Loz changed to what? An alternator in a car. I did. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Ago, yeah. Anthony Salisbury North. What did you learn? Um, actually, it only happened yesterday afternoon. I changed a number plate garnish on the back of my um Holden Ute in, oh. my, in the tailgate. <laughs> How garnish. good! And there was a tutorial up, just ready to go. Yeah, yeah, I, I followed all it because it was a nightmare. I wouldn't have had any idea how to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, it was really good. I followed it and got it all done. And it's probably the third or fourth time I've actually done something um, for my car that I followed good on, on you. YouTube. Good, good on you, Anthony. Save a bit of money. Do it yourself on a Sunday hour. It was beautiful weather yesterday. Let's head to Birkenhead. G'day, Bianca. What have you used uh, online and YouTube, social media for? <laughs> hey, guys. How are you? Good, good mate. Um, I, there is a follow, like there's a um, YouTube page that I cannot remember the name of, but he talks you through everything your dad might have taught you as a kid Aww. that you would not otherwise be like knowledgeable on, like how to put up shelves and how to fix, you know, your pipes and such. And um, that has been so helpful for me over the years. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. See, that's the kind of stuff that, yeah, you handy. know, if you don't know Jeez, it, you don't know it. And yeah, then, we do. yeah. Stu, Manopara West. What'd you learn, Stu? Uh, it wasn't me, but it was my son. He rebuilt a car engine. <gasps> Gee, that's good. You're joking. From YouTube. And from YouTube. Him and his mate were down the shed, and I'd wandered down there and sort of like, do you know what you're doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're watching YouTube. And I'm like, okay. And they ended up racing at, at Tail and Bend. How long did it take <laughs> him to rebuild an engine, Stu? Ah, uh, weeks. Weeks, yeah. Because I do a bit on the weekend and then go back yeah. on the week next weekend well, and do good, more. Though, what a great project. Yeah. That's so good. Fixing up a car, Very I good. mean, with your mate, is there anything better? Well, big job. Let's go to Dublin. G'day, Adrian. What did you learn to do on YouTube? Yeah, g'day, guys. Yeah, I um, going back probably 12 years ago, um, I watched some um, YouTube videos and uh, I was right into growing my own meat birds at home, you know, like your chickens and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and then what I did is I went to the scrapyard and I bought some aluminium plating and I bought bits and pieces and I built myself a chicken plucker. So, <laughs> chicken um, plucker. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I, I, bought a, um, I bought a keg, so I cut the top of the keg off. So yeah. you sit that on the fire, put your water in, yeah. and then dip your chicken in there and then you drop it into the top of this chicken plucker. Um, I had to order the special rubber fingers from America, right. but I built... I built the whole system, put a motor on it, bearings, pulleys, uh, the whole works, and you can drop three chickens in, and you can have them totally naked in about 10 seconds. Well, I'll be plucked. Adrian the chicken plugger. <laughs> there you go. Pluck me. Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Well, I think we have to give him the oh, our oh, house. He's winning now because I can remember pulling feathers out of chickens it's awful. in hot water. It is not a good job. Why does a chicken plucker as well? We used to chicken pluck. No. Yeah, we used to, when the chooks were not laying eggs in him, we used to, pluck, we used to no. kill them, pluck them, chop the heads the off heads with off. an axe, put them in hot water, right. pull the feathers out. We're with Alice Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, he's getting a voucher, a hundred dollar voucher to, to, to Devar House. Uh, it's a beautiful wellness centre. You get massages, facials, red light therapy, ice baths, Pilates. I have a feeling you might want to use it for a Mother's yeah, Day. It's voucher. Mother's Day this Sunday, everyone. Don't forget, get organised. It's Triple M. Auto Cam, real time video from Auto Masters. Triple M's Rover Mill. Triple M's Rumor Mill. Adelaide's most listened to segment. Hear it every day at 7.40 on Rue, Dits and Loz. Yeah, we're right. throwing up a little prize today for yep. the rumour, just the best rumour of the day. And they're uh, heading down to the races at Saturday at Morfu, like Dits did last weekend. There, you had a yeah, cracking day. I was there on Saturday. Really, really good. The yeah. Wolf Blast Centre, the man, it was well, brilliant. And yeah. this weekend might even be better with the Goodwood Handicap. It's a great race day. Paul from Bowden. G'day, Paul. Morning, how you going, guys? What's your rumour? I heard at, at after Live Golf that uh, Liver chasing Hideki Mitsuyami, the world number 15, to try and uh, cash in on the Japanese market. And mm. interestingly enough, watching yesterday, Greg Norman was in Tokyo watching the Live Golf yesterday. Right. Mm. All right, there you go. So it's, it's going to get bigger and bigger, I think, isn't well, it? They've already got another event happening at Live Golf. They, just they played Singapore. They flew from here straight to Singapore. So they've played that. And played. Yep. Now they're the off party to Japan. Yeah. Like in How Singapore, often do they have tournaments at Live Golf? They don't have a lot. Uh, they pack a the few in. Yeah, here, they have. Sound, obviously, well, I think it makes sense while they're in this part of the world, instead of having to travel all the way back here, because most of them live in the states, don't they? Yeah. So they play three or four tournaments while they're here, I suppose. Right now, some footy goss. Are you oh, ready? Oh, you said you had something good. So the name Will Hayward's been thrown around over the last week or two. He's been linked to Port Adelaide. He's mentioned with the Crows Sydney too. Sydney player, yeah, we'll Sydney kick player, four on the weekend. Who's from North Adelaide originally, right? Yeah. So Adelaide boy has been linked to Port Adelaide. I've got another name for you. Very handy player, a free agent from GWS, Harry Perryman. Port Adelaide are chasing and are talking to Harry Perryman. Um, now, how would you describe him? Now that I've told you it is rude, tough, tough sort of, but yeah. he can go in the midfield as well. But he can, defender, he can play, down. he can play half forward, he can play wing, he can play mid, he can play back. He's a the old fashioned utility. Mm. Um, mm. So if Port get busy again in the off season and get Haywood and well, Perryman, that would be pretty good. Because you haven't got a first round draft pick this year, so mm. if you could get those, mm. they're both good players. Mm. Oh, God, you've got a never ending supply of cash down there at Port Adelaide. <laughs> no, you? it's, it's just a nice place to be. People like being there. Yeah. So there you go. Look out for that. All right, That's Harry Perryman. Harry yeah. Perryman. It kind of sounds like a made up name. Is, it, well, is a, this a real man? It's a Perryman's Bakery Detective in North Adelaide. Senior isn't it? Sergeant mm. Harry Perryman. <laughs> Harry That's Perryman. Right. That's right. <laughs>